Korra is a figure who stands as a vivid example of rebellion against divinely established authority and the dire consequences that follow such insubordination. The account of Korra is primarily drawn from the Hebrew Scriptures, specifically the Book of Numbers, Chapter 16, and Jehovah's Witnesses frequently cite his story as a cautionary lesson for worshippers today. Who was Korah? Korah was a Levite, a member of the priestly tribe chosen by Jehovah God to serve in support roles at the tabernacle during Israel's wilderness wanderings. More specifically, Korah belonged to the Kohathite clan, known for their duty in transporting and caring for the most sacred elements of the tabernacle's furnishings. He was therefore already in a privileged position, entrusted with weighty responsibilities that affirmed his importance within the congregation of Israel. Yet, Korah was not satisfied. According to Jehovah's Witnesses, his example vividly illustrates how harboring envy, pride, and a critical spirit toward God's appointed servants can lead one down a destructive path. The Nature of Korah's Rebellion Korah's uprising was not a mere difference of opinion. Instead, it was a deliberate, organized challenge to the leadership of Moses and Aaron, two men whom Jehovah himself had chosen. Numbers chapter 16 narrates how Korah, along with Dathan, Abiram, and 250 prominent members of the assembly, confronted Moses and Aaron with a bold accusation. They claimed that Moses and Aaron had exalted themselves over the congregation, implying that all Israelites were holy and equally qualified to lead. In other words, Korah and his associates questioned the divine arrangement, an arrangement that, from the witnesses' standpoint, was not up for negotiation. Why was Korah's attitude so wrong? For Jehovah's Witnesses, the heart issue was not simply a matter of procedure or personality differences. Korah's challenge amounted to rebellion against Jehovah's theocratic order. Moses had not appointed himself, he was called by God at the burning bush and tasked with guiding the nation. Aaron was chosen by Jehovah to serve as high priest. By undermining these God-appointed figures, Korah was effectively rejecting Jehovah's authority. This rebellious disposition is a key talking point in witness literature. They frequently emphasize that Jehovah uses imperfect humans to carry out his will, and he expects his people to respect that arrangement. Challenging it brazenly, as Korah did, manifests a lack of faith in God himself. The Outcome of the Rebellion The punishment meted out to Korah and his followers is well known and is recounted in both the Hebrew scriptures and referenced in the Christian Greek scriptures. According to Numbers 16, the earth opened up and swallowed Korah, Dathan, and Abiram along with their households. As for the 250 men offering incense, fire from Jehovah consumed them. This dramatic divine judgment demonstrated conclusively that the rebellion was not only against Moses and Aaron but, more critically, against Jehovah. From a Jehovah's Witness perspective, this event served as a sobering warning signal not just to the Israelites of that time, but to all who would later come to serve God. It reminds believers that Jehovah can read hearts and that he will not tolerate treachery within his congregation. Later references to Korah Korah's name does not fade into obscurity after his demise. The memory of his sin and its disastrous outcome reverberates through the scriptures. Jude chapter 11 in the Christian Greek scriptures highlights the path of Cain, the error of Balaam, and the rebellion of Korah as pitfalls for Christians to avoid. Jehovah's Witnesses point to Jude's mention as evidence that Korah's legacy remained an enduring moral lesson, even into the era of early Christianity. Thus, modern-day Christians, including Jehovah's Witnesses, see a clear parallel. Members of the Christian congregation are urged to remain loyal, to respect divinely appointed oversight, and to avoid a presumptuous, rebellious spirit. Lessons for Modern-Day Believers In the literature and on JW.org, Korah's account often appears in discussions about loyalty, humility, and respect for theocratic order. Jehovah's Witnesses underscore that true worship includes recognizing the arrangement that Jehovah has put in place. This includes those who take the lead in congregation matters, such as elders, who, while imperfect, strive to represent God's standards and shepherd his flock according to Bible principles. Korah's example warns against allowing personal ambition, envy, or dissatisfaction to erode spiritual unity. Instead, believers are encouraged to cultivate a spirit of cooperation, showing deference to the order God has established. Such an attitude preserves peace and ensures that the worship offered to Jehovah is unified, joyful, and free from the poison of internal strife. Real-world application today Jehovah's Witnesses often draw practical lessons from Korah's example for their everyday lives. 
While Christians today are not led by prophets like Moses, they do have a global organization and local congregations with appointed elders who are said to be guided by scriptural principles. When they are counseled or guided by these appointed men, witnesses are reminded of Korah's story. Will they exhibit humility, patience, and submission to direction they believe comes from God's word? Or will they adopt a rebellious stance that challenges the very order God is believed to have established? The account of Korah offers a stark reminder that destructive pride and insubordination are not minor lapses, but serious missteps that can damage one's relationship with God and the entire congregation. Please share and like and please subscribe.